Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Moving to Sarasota. My name is Drew Beyer and today we're going to be talking all about the things you can do to make the winning offer on a home. All right, everybody. So again, welcome to another episode of Moving to Sarasota. My name is Drew Beyer, local Sarasota realtor. And if you guys could go ahead and like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Helps me out, helps grow the channel, helps get the word out more. Also, if you're new here, uh, go ahead and click the link in the description below to join our Facebook group, Moving to Sarasota Bradenton area. Uh, tons of people in there, locals, tourists, uh, people trying to move here bunch of different people, all, you know, great community, answering questions, talking, um, just a lot of good stuff going on in there. So if you want to join that, go ahead and click the link in the description below. Um, but without further ado, let's get into the top things that you can do in order to make your offer on a house the winning offer. All right, guys. So like I said, we're going to go over a list here. Number one is pretty obvious. Uh, everybody can probably guess it, but it's going to be price. Uh, sales price is obviously going to be pretty much the number one factor for a lot of sellers when they decide to go with a certain offer. You know, if somebody's at 300,000 and somebody's at 350, more, or le more likely than not, they're going to go with that 350 just because it is the higher number and it's a pretty significant amount. Um, as the numbers get closer together, you know, you can probably do different things that will make your offer more favorable. Um, and even when you're further apart, you know, if you have certain things that can make your offer a lot more favorable, maybe you can win it. But when it's something like that, say it's 300 versus 350, you can almost guarantee that the 350 offer is going to be the one that's accepted unless it's just kind of a ridiculous offer with weird contingencies and stuff. But number one is going to be that sales price, that dollar, that number. All right, so number two on the list is also a pretty easy one to guess if you've you know been a home buyer before or if you've dealt with the process at all. Uh, it's gonna be cash. So if you are a cash buyer, more than likely you're gonna be at the top of the list um, or in the top grouping of the offers because you know you do have cash and cash is king. Uh, it's still the case in real estate. Uh, most of the time, you know, cash offers are gonna be the preferred one. You don't have to deal with an appraisal, you don't have to deal with certain other things like different insurances and stuff, depending on the deal. Uh, there's a lot of benefits to cash. There's kind of some workarounds to this that we'll talk about on um, one of the further on down the list things. But again, number two is going to be having cash, uh, whether that's a full cash offer or having enough cash to make up for things. Cash in general is just good to have. And if you have enough cash to cover the entire deal, then you're probably in the best shape out of most of the other um, offers. So again, cash, really big deal, really helps, especially in a competitive market like this. Number three is actually going to be kind of built off of that same thing that we just talked about, which was cash. Um, and I talked about it a little bit there, you know, you have certain levels of cash, say you don't have enough cash to cover the whole deal, but um, you're gonna be financing only 50%. So on a $500,000 house, if you have $250,000 to put down, uh, what you can do to be a little more creative is you can put down, say, $200,000. And instead of it being $500,000 that you purchased the home for, you say, hey, I'm going to buy your house for five twenty-five. dollars So you take that money that you were going to put down and you tell them, hey, Mr. Seller, I'm going to waive my appraisal. Uh, you know, I'm still going to get an appraisal, but the number is basically arbitrary and I am willing to put up whatever amount over that that I need to. So say the house is a $500,000 list price, you offer 525, the appraisal comes back and it's only 495. So you're now on the hook to put up $30,000 in cash at the closing table in order to make this transaction go through. And we're seeing that pretty much every day here, uh, especially in this market. Across the country, it's happening. Um, but you know, here especially, a lot of people have cash that maybe they're doing a full cash deal, but in a lot of cases, people have large amounts of cash, just not all cash, especially when you get into these higher priced homes, but they are willing to you know, make up these differences 
and just waive the appraisal completely because it is such a competitive market. So that's one way you can really get creative. You can play around with the numbers in different ways and figure out you know, what makes the most sense for you and how you can appeal most to the seller. So waiving that appraisal, number three. Okay, so number four is something that's a little bit unique, especially uh, in this market, it's, very, it's getting more and more common. Uh, you might've heard of it, it's called a leaseback. Um, traditional markets, it's not super common, but right now, um, you know, maybe one in every third or fourth deal is really having one of these where the sellers don't quite have it figured out where they're gonna go. Um, Cause you know, <laughs> just, just as way, you know, they're selling their house for say $20,000 above asking, they're gonna have to do the same thing on, you know, they, they sell the house and then all of a sudden, boom, they become the buyer now. So they might've sold their house for 20,000 above asking, but now they're looking to buy one and maybe their first offer or their second offer even isn't accepted. So they need some time. Uh, that's where a lease back comes into play. So maybe you aren't the, you know, number one best cash offer or whatever the case is on a house, but you're, you're right up there close and then you know, you talk with your realtor and you say, hey, you know, I don't need to be down there immediately. Um, I can, you know, stay up in whatever state I'm in or city or, you know, whatever the case is. And you offer them a 60 day lease back or maybe just a 30 day or whatever, you know, that's all negotiable. But if you offer someone a 60 day lease back and you're close to their offer, the, the top offer that they have, they might be willing to go with you um, just because they need time to find a place and they don't want to waste money on a short-term rental or, you know, they don't want to move twice and have to, you know, stay with a friend or a family member. You know, there's just so many moving parts and it can, it can really become a logistical nightmare to try to move multiple times or, you know, not have a place to go or, you know, whatever the case is. Um, leasebacks really come in handy, especially when you might not have that like super top of the line purchasing power. Um, you know, you can talk with your realtor, really get creative with your offer and potentially, you know, scoop it out from under someone who's just trying to come over the top from the dollar standpoint. But last but not least, uh, you can play around with the inspection period. Um, so basically, it's state of Florida on an as is contract, uh, you have a what's called an inspection window and standard is usually like 15 days, but that's pretty much not happening at all right now. Uh, a lot of people are dropping to 10 or seven, sometimes five, sometimes one. Uh, some people are actually waiving inspections completely. That's something that I definitely don't recommend just because the way, you know, it's kind of like the wild west down here right now. If you, if you're waiving inspections, some of these houses that are built in the fifties, sixties, seventies, I mean, you could be left with, a whole lot of work that you didn't even see coming. Um, even if it's a block home and it looks to be, you know, structurally sound and good, you still just want to, you know, have an inspector give it a once over. It's just not worth the potential aggravation and you know, huge loss of of money down the road if if you're stuck with like a huge plumbing problem or a massive electrical problem. And just from a safety standpoint, you know, peace of mind for you and your family, waiving an inspection really just not a good idea unless maybe it's like a new build that was just inspected within the last couple of years. I can kind of see it in that situation, but for the most part, I'm writing up contracts right now with a five or seven day inspection window. Got a great relationship with my inspector, can get them over there quickly, you know, efficiently. We do a once over of the house, can give you that peace of mind. That's what makes the most sense, but that's just another way that you can, you know, win, win a seller over is say, hey, you know, I've got I've got cash or I'm waving my appraisal, you know, this is a totally clean deal, no contingencies basically. And the inspection period is going to be five days. We'll be in and out. We're not, you know, trying to jerk you around or anything like that. We're just coming in and out and we'll be, we'll be good to go. And then after that five or 10 or 15 day window, like I said, right now, it's usually on the shorter end. So after that five day window, your earnest money that you put down that escrow deposit, uh, that is going to be locked up after that. So you will not be able to get that back. That five day window is kind of your safety zone of saying, okay, I'm checking everything out about the house. And after that, that's it. I'm locked in. I'm going to, I'm going to move forward with the purchase. So again, inspection window, that is another way to just kind of play around with different numbers and, you know, adjust for maybe making it a little bit nicer for the seller. 
All right, like I said, guys, that's uh, five ways that you can really make your offer stand out. I know you've probably seen videos similar to this, um, but a lot of people aren't talking about some of the ways you can do it. Um, this really just gives you a brief overview of those ways and different things that you can just kind of, you know, tweak, turn, turn one way or the other, um, take a little bit of money here, move it there, um, take, you know, just a lot of different things that you can do, make your offer a little bit more creative. Uh, again, it's all negotiable. This is all something you can talk with your realtor about, whether you're on the buy or sell side. Um, you know, really just some some good resources and some good tools in this highly competitive seller's market to make your offer stand out as a buyer. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Like I said, I am a local Sarasota, Florida realtor. Um, and if you guys enjoy these videos, please do like and subscribe. Really appreciate it. Helps me out, helps grow the channel. Uh, and last but not least, like I said earlier, go ahead and click that link in the description below. Join our Facebook group, Moving to Sarasota, Bradenton area. It's an awesome group. A lot of people in there showing, uh, showing love and, and commenting, you know, giving advice, all kinds of stuff like that. So other than that, appreciate you guys watching this one and I will uh, see you guys in the next video.